Hi everyone, it's Wendy. I am back today to show you how I make the cover for uh, and that unique closure for the um, recent uh, journals and kits that I've done. Um, I will. Um, I thought I would start out by showing you how I actually make my covers. I've done this before in a video, but a little bit has changed, and it's mostly just the glue that I use. Before I get started, I just wanted to thank you all for the wonderful comments uh, and feedback on that video. It's been really lovely. And yes, I will do kits again um, with journals. Probably won't be until the fall uh, because I do head to the cottage next week. Um, and I need to have access to all my supplies and I can't take everything with me. I don't dare. I'd have to leave my husband at home. <laughs> we can't have that. Okay, so this is what I do. I choose my topping fabric and I cut it to 9 inches tall by 13 inches wide. This is an antique um, or vintage hemp that I got from my dear friend Rachel at Roxy Creations and I so wanted to use that um, as the cover. Uh, and this will be, uh, you know, the journal that I'll make to go alongside with us making our ephemera and whatnot for the journals. Uh, and then the inside uh, I'm going to have as this um, cotton canvas and it is a seven ounce canvas. I order it from Amazon uh, and it is a really nice weight. I tear that um, to just over that size. So this is nine by 13, which I cut with my rotary cutter on a board and on a self healing board. And this is nine and a quarter uh, this way and about 13 and a quarter. I just want a little bit on the edges. So this is all I do. I lay my tacky glue down on its side so that the glue will flow towards the top. And nothing super technical here. This is exactly what I do. I take my glue and I squeeze it. Uh, and I go all around, you know, get within an inch to half an inch from the side and then I just make this sort of a pattern just I'm just trying to do this so that I'll have glue everywhere that's the goal and when I say everywhere I don't mean all over my table or my hands or whatever but and then I go the other way I just kind of zigzag the other way um, I do put a piece of this is a garbage bag that's underneath and I use this garbage bag for um, just about every every application that I do and uh, then when it's when I've had enough with the garbage bag I'll actually use it as a garbage bag so then I take one a card just like a extra uh, or an old credit card whatever you have and I just move the glue with the card like that and I find if you hold a corner of the fabric you can really get you can really get some good momentum with the glue and see how nicely that covers I can't remember if I used a card in my last one or if I used a paintbrush but this is definitely how I do it now and it just for me I find it does such a good job I'm just making sure I'm on screen and making sure that there are no spots that have no glue I think that's pretty darn good. So I use one of these for that application and the other I use for just trying to get bubbles out. Now one of these sides has a rougher bit and I want that on the inside. And I'm just kind of looking as I go and moving the fabric a little bit. Trying to get it close to the edge because I don't want I want it to come fairly close. I like seeing a bit of that fray if I can, but it's not its not a game, a deal breaker if it doesn't show. Like that. And then I take my other card, and then sometimes you'll get little bubbles, or not bubbles, but little creases. Just probably best not to be too aggressive at first. But this will make sure you have 
proper adhesion and I hope that's not the sort of sound that is like a chalkboard for some folks. I hope not. Okay, so that's that side. And then just on the other side as well. So that is the cover. It's hard to tell with the two um, surfaces uh, because they're so similar in co cover, color. Sorry, this is the, the top. I let it dry. I will put it on another um, piece of, I put down some parchment paper, like baking paper, and I just lay it there for maybe four hours. And then after four hours, then I lay it like this. I don't fold it. I don't fold that bit, but I like it to create that bit of an arch there. And once it's completely dry, then I sew in uh, my uh, cardstock that's going to be on the edges for tuck spots, and I sew all the way around it. So, um, next time you see this, it'll be seamless for you, uh, but the next time uh, I join you, I will be starting to talk about making the, um, the closure for this journal, where I put the actual um, uh, fabric pen holder and the faux leather little bit that creates that closure. So, it'll seem seamless, I hope, for you. <laughs> it'll be attached to this video. For me, it won't be until tomorrow because I have to wait for everything to dry. So thank you for watching, and I'll see you in a couple seconds. Bye. Hi everyone, it's Wendy. I'm back again for uh, the next part of um, making these this um, journal with the interesting closure. So the journal has covered, has dried. I have put, um, have uh, sewed in the little uh, tuck spots that I do on either side. It just gives it a little more weight for it to close. These are two and a, a quarter wide. And then I do a, a quick little divot out of them. I do sew up this side in a straight stitch because then I know I'm going to go around the whole perimeter of the top with the zigzag. Uh, and I think you can see the zigzag from the front. Um, yes, and so these are where I put my signatures. So I put those in next. Now what I have, I have a standard little template that I've made for myself. And let me just show you. I use my my big old ruler. And how wide is this? This is two, just about two inches wide. Um, yeah, and then the space between the two is about just, about, yeah, it's three quarters of an inch. So what I've done is I've made this the length of my signature, which is eight and a half two inches wide, and I made sure I had three quarters inches between, of an inch between the two and equidistance from the side. So I literally just mapped it out uh, using a couple of rulers. And I like to do a four hole. Uh, and you can tell this has been used a few times based on the holes. So just in terms of a tip, in terms of how do I know where to put it uh, when I'm gonna mark it, I take I don't know if you're going to be able to see that because I really can't tell. I can move this sewing machine a bit. Um, I actually use my no heel board that has inches mapped out, but um, that is, it's a three foot by four foot board, so I, I, I couldn't really bring it. I'm upstairs. Uh, so what I do is I look at centering this. Uh, and so I know it's 13 and a bit wide, so what I do is I take this and I kind of put it, I have mark it for the top on the grid and I kind of, move that up a little bit. Uh, what I do is I look for the center of 13 inches. So it's three and six, that's 13 inches. There's a little on either side and I go six and a half. So I go two, four, six and a half. And I'm, that's the, the center. And then here it's two, four, six and a half. And then I know I'm in the center. And I just take a pen and I mark through those holes. And that's, that's what we get, these bits. 
here. And then I use this to mark inside the signature as well to um, uh, mark the um, placement of the holes. And I'm just going to grab the paper that I've set aside. Just one second so I can show you how I do that. I thought I had everything right there and I left my pages that I've already folded uh, over in another location. So what I do to mark my papers is these are all folded in the order that I want them. I take this, I actually clip the bottom and then this I mark, there's the top, put it right into the crease and you can see it's eight and a half and I take my Tim Holtz uh, tool and I where I cross it and that's why I cross the line through the holes I make a mark with that and then then I puncture it through so I go all the way down and make the mark and then I poke it through and then I'm ready to sew it in to here so that's the method that I use I hope that makes some sense um, so yeah so we're ready for the outside pocket so I've already made the outside pocket uh, and I've put lace and a little bit of fabric on the, this time. So the outside pocket is six and three quarters by five and a half. So six and three quarters by five and a half. And then this bit is one and three quarters so then you come in one and a three quarter and then I took a large dinner plate and I just did the curve from that. So what you want to make sure you do is when you put it on top of the whatever it is you're going to use, like if you're going to use faux leather like I have, you want to make sure that you um, are marking it on the side of the leather that you want up. Uh, so there you go and I've done that and then I've taken some fabric and lace. just a little glue and glued it over and then I've sewn I've sewn zigzag across here and around the curve the rest I'm leaving open because that is going to be sewn onto the cover uh, right up here as well so I think it's time for us to do that part hopefully I'm not losing elements that we need for the next bit oh my goodness this is very awkward in terms of the um, the angles. Okay, so I know this is the right side because these I can read, they're not upside down. So what I'm going to do, turn my machine on, first of all, okay, and then I'm going to put it on zigzag and select my stitch length. And I'm just going to set this where I want it. And I'm going to sew this bottom portion first. And I'm lining it up, not but with, this, with the edge, but close to the edge. So I'm just going to sew this edge first. Apologies for the noise. And hopefully you can see that a bit. And I'm going to stop just before the corner. And then I'm going to turn it. And then put it back down and then I'm going to start it again and backstitch a few times. Okay, now you could of course glue it to tack it on but I don't like to use too much glue on the cover uh, and this way I know it's in there firmly and now I can do this edge. If we start it here then you have all the bulk of it down here and it's more likely to move. So if you start at the bottom, you're going to get a better result in terms of it not, you know, moving on you. So I'm backstitch at the top and then I'm going to try and get as close to that edge as I can. Apologies again for the, so the sounds. You could see me I'm I'm at I'm doing this arm length away from the sewing machine so um, yeah there you go we've got our pocket in. it's got a little bit of a wonk there but 
we're not perfect. We're not striving for perfection. And then, uh, yeah, it's good. So I'm just going to uh, make sure that the, any strings are that I don't want. You know me, I like a lot of strings or threads, but I don't want them all. Okay, there we go. So the next bit, you're going to take a piece of another piece of your faux leather or leather, whatever you're going to use, or a heavy fabric. Um, it's just got to have good heft. And this is three inches by five. So you want a rectangle that's three inches by five. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to zigzag, mostly for the look, on three sides. The two short sides and the long side. So we'll do that really quickly. And I don't need to uh, do any back stitching because this is going to be stitched over. I tend to do that. If I'm going to be stitching over it at some point, like I'm going to be casting over with another row of stitching, that will lock it in place. So we won't need to do that. So we've got that at the ready. And then we're going to do the pocket. Sorry. That is the bit for the pen. Okay, so this is six inches wide by five and a half tall. Um, I'm sure you can do them other sides, other sizes, but this is just what has worked for me. You're going to fold it over about half an inch at the top on the, so that it's more like five inches this way. So it'll be similar in size to the piece we've just, just done. And if you need that repeating, um, it's best just to rewind and watch again. And so I'm just going to fold that over. That's just going to give it a little bit more weight for the top. Okay, whoops, sorry about that. That's very noisy. And just cut some of these threads. All right, so we've got that. And we're going to fold it with that fold on the inside. Now you could do it on the outside and it would be kind of cute too, but um, to be consistent with the ones I've done already, you just fold it and just kind of finger press it so that it is nicely folded. Okay, now down this folded edge, I'm going to bring my sewing machine. I'm going to bring a stitch about half an inch in. So um, I am going to back stitch on that. So half an inch from this from this edge, you want to go all the way down. You don't need to back stitch because we're going to overcast that. So that's what you have. You have about half an inch, a little more than a centimeter from the folded edge. And then from this edge, we're going to come in so that there's about an inch on this side from this edge. And we're going to back stitch there. And I'm just kind of eyeballing it, but I'm looking at the lines over here and following the lines. It's a bit of a grid on my sewing machine. So we've got that. This is all very simple and <laughs> I was uh, playing with making it and uh, it just came together. This, the first size I tried worked for me. So that was very, that was very good, I have to say. So then we're going to sew across the bottom and I just take the side of my presser foot uh, and sew across uh, so, so that it's level with this side of the little it's almost like a little pouch, but it's probably about just a little more than a, a quarter of an inch that it's from the bottom. And that just closes it. So when you put a pen in it, the pen doesn't fall out. We don't want that. Okay. So we are cooking. Get these threads out of the way. 
very annoying. All right, so what we want to do now, I'm just going to move my machine out of the way, is we want we need to position these. Now, that's why we put the, the uh, indicators of where the signatures are going to go, and I don't know that you can see those. Can you see those little dots? Um, I don't want to make them any darker because then that would they would show on the journal when it's done. I use a little bit of um, art glitter glue for this process. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, um, I see where my location is for my pocket. I'm going to put glue on the side I want up. Uh, so we're going to put glue there and then we're going to position this so that we're not too close to the pocket and we're about, I want to try and center it as much as possible but I'm about a quarter of an inch from the dots and that's how I know I'm in the right vicinity so that when we'll be able to fold it like that and that will be, it'll cover the signatures Similarly, I actually do this. I, I put a few dots in this. There's a little bit of an open bit here. And you could run a stitch down there, but I just put a little bit of glue there. And I'm going to take this, and we want it so that this is laying on the outside of the book. Um, so we're going to glue that, and you must make sure that your, your opening for the pen is at the top. So I'm just going to put a bit of glue there. And I'm going to glue that like only about a quarter of an inch. Um, try and center it as well. I'm looking over here trying to get it a similar distance up. So you can see it's glued. It hasn't set yet. But there's about a quarter of an inch over this where the, um, the tuck spot is. Okay. We're moving along. <laughs> I hope this isn't super dull, you guys. Uh, but I did promise I would show you, and um, hopefully this will help you put the same feature in your journal. Uh, so then we're going to take this, and we're going to go, and we're going to do a stitch right um, did I turn that off? I didn't know I had. Darn. <laughs> uh, that's just me being lazy. So now I'm going to do a stitch just up that edge. Lots of good back stitching. Again, it's not uber straight because I'm at a really strange angle here, but it's good. From the front, it's just, it's very noticeable, rare, not very noticeable is what I'm trying to say. Um, so there you go on that. And then this one, we're going to go from, I like to do it from this side, um, and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to go right over the stitch from where I stitched around the entire journal. And just go right down to the back stitch. Okay. Perfect. I think we could use a little bit more here because it's not, because this has a bit of an overlap there, it just needs a little bit more tacking, I think. That's good. Yeah, that way it's got a little bit more. I think I'm just gonna even that up. That wouldn't have been a problem if I was at the proper angle here, but Seriously, you cannot, unless you put it on backwards, you really, or upside down, you really can't ruin it. And the more stitches in that hemp, I just think that was super beautiful. Like, look at all those stitches in there. It's just super pretty. 
Okay, now I'm going to move my sewing machine because I don't think I need it anymore. Um, I hope we're okay for time. Regardless, you know, if I have to put three videos together, I'll put three videos together. We want you to have this information. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, essentially, that's going to fold over and that's going to fold over like that. And remember, these are where this, the signatures fold in. Um, so yes, let's, let's move on. So the next thing I do is I want to put a, I want to put a, an eyelet and I just kind of center this. And that's why I have that little bit, I had that little bit, uh, that half an inch at the fold was so that there would be a spot to put the eyelet. So you wouldn't have to, um, um, sorry, you wouldn't have to encroach on the actual pocket for the pen. That was what I was thinking in the, in the moment. So this can be a bit tricky putting an, a grommet or an eyelet in fabric. Um, but it does the trick. So there we go worked really well. And what I do um, is I take a little bit of art glitter glue and I just put it around the inside of that. It will dry clear. It's just a small amount but it just kind of reinforces that so that the if the eyelet decided it might want to shift or come out it's less likely to do that. If you have an eyelet that comes out, then there's lots of fixes for that. Maybe I'll do a video on, on that at some point. Okay, so we have that. And the next bit is that we want to make a, uh, like a little circle for um, the, um, for tying it. So I've already done this one. Uh, essentially all I do, and you've seen me do this before, is I take two pieces of craft card stock, use whatever you have because you're not going to see it, and then I put one that's the decorative on top. And this is some Tim Holtz. Um, so I've glued those together with our glitter glue. It's nice and dry. And then I put a hole right in the center, like so. And then I'm going to grab an eyelet, or not an eyelet, a brad. Now I like these ones from Recollections. Uh, the Tim Holt ones are fantastic, don't get me wrong, but these ones have a little bit better, like a little bit wider, uh, and that's a little bit better because it's covering more surface. I'm just gonna sit that in that hole like that. So that, yeah, it covers a little bit more surface and I think it makes it stronger. It makes it less likely to be pulled through and what I want to do here, okay, is I just want to poke a hole about, I'm going to say an inch and a quarter, and try and center it as much as possible. Just poke a hole through, making sure you don't poke through to the, um, your, your cover and put a hole in your cover. Having said that, we could fix that too. <laughs> We already do a video on different fixes a person can do for things. So then you just open that up and there we are. Simple. And then I've got some of this. This is the Tim Holtz um, fabric tape. And it is super sticky and uh, I love it for this, for this use. Um, so I'm going to take that and just take the backing off. It's like it's like carpet tape except in its stickiness. I'm just going to line that up with there. And that just covers the brad so it's less likely to catch on something. So I folded the papers I wanted to use so that you would get a sense of what this would fit like. So it's coming together really well. I'm very happy with that. Uh, so then I take some twine. You could use um, sorry, it's a little bit thick, 
unless you, you know, you could split your sari. So I'm going to cut that. I think that's about a foot actually. 11 inches or a foot. It's folded. I'm going to put, now that's still a little bit wet. I'm going to put it down through um, and pull it up. That way you it locks there. And there's a name for this knot that eludes me right now. But there you go. I think that eyelet's trying to come out. So um, I probably shouldn't do this step right now, but I can fix it. I can fix it. Like so. And then what would happen is you would take this and you would, I like to go from the bottom for this. See, look, it's come out. Oh dear, it's going to take more time for the video, but there you go. What do you do? It's because I tried to do it be too soon. There we go. Um, the, the string. So let's just put one in. I think what I might do is I might take a piece of this. How's this for crafting? We're going to do some uh, seat of your pants repair work. Remember when I said maybe I need to do a video on how you would repair it? Well, it's happening. <laughs> so I'm going to cover the hole. Actually, I want to make sure I have this where I want it here. I'm going to cover the hole. I'm going to come up to that seam because I want it to be pre pretty on this side. I'm less concerned about it being pretty on this side. And there, we've covered that hole. Now we're going to try our eyelet again. Now this may be a little bit sticky, um, but let's give it a whirl. That's going to give it more heft. And a better spot for the eyelet to adhere to. And it actually gives us some consistency as well with the um, with how we decorate it over here. See, that's better. There you go. Already better. Okay, that's it. Stay calm. <laughs> it's working. It's working. So this is going to go in here. I have no idea how long this video is, but like I said, I sure hope I'm not boring you to tears. Uh, and then, remember those would be sewn in at this point, like that, right up to the edge of it. Whoops, well I've got this in the wrong place. This has become a, a bit of a moment, hasn't it? Okay, so that's going to come over this way. And then these are going to come and go from the bottom like that. And then what I do is I take a Tim Holtz. This this is wouldn't be pulling if these were actually sewn in at this stage. I take my uh, whatever I'm going to use to anchor that so that it it hangs down nicely. I pull that in like so, and I fold it up like that, and then I go around, I hope this looks like it makes sense, and then I pull like that. So that secures that in place, just getting rid of the super long end, and then I can go another one if I want it, and that says breathe. So those are where the signatures will be, if you can see from here. Um, that's how it'll look from the side. When you open it, it's like this, and then we just undo it and we're good. And this is where your pen will go, or your pokey tool. <laughs> so there. Gosh, guys, I hope that made sense, and I hope it wasn't a disaster. 
Um, lots of fun to do. I love making these. It was really fun to just kind of come up with the concept. Um, and I'm really pleased. Uh, I actually may do that on future ones. Just put the, the fabric tape there because it does reinforce it from the get-go. Okay, guys. Thank you very much for watching. And um, I will see you again. And we'll be starting to make some ephemera once I know folks have received their kits. Um, and then you can play along. You can make your own journal and play along. You don't have to make a journal like this. You can play along, sorry, and put ephemera in whatever you're making. Okay, thank you so much for watching. We'll see you all next time. Bye-bye, everyone.